Special organization. Now, this is a film about freedom medicine. Freedom medicine was founded three years ago in 1985 by my wife, Gayla Claire, and myself to help provide some type of care to the Afghans. We came here in 1985 and did a medical needs assessment to see exactly where we would fit in. And based on that needs assessment, my wife went inside Afghanistan clinics and I came over three months later and did the same. Based on the information that she received, we were able to put together a proposal for a humanitarian assistance grant through USAID. And in 1985 in November, our first team came over. That was three years ago. We've trained about uh, 70 paramedics and have about 65 of them now operating inside Afghanistan treating the old men and the women and the children who were affected by the war. Hello, down to Lynn, down to Lynn, come in. Hello, down. Uh, with the ambulance from Peshawar has been delayed, and we're wondering if you could send in the ambulance from the field. We've got a patient here with a broken neck, needs to go to Peshawar right away. Okay, we'll move it out. Thank you much. Okay. Send the uh, that ambulance in from the field. Oh, good. All right, good. so it should be here within a half an hour. Do you have the stretcher all ready for it? She's all ready to go. Ready to go, okay. She'll be here in 20, 30 minutes, okay? Good. Bob said that the ambulance from the shower is going to be at least a half an hour getting down here. Yeah, okay. I was hoping it would be here by now, but... We're back here by 3, and we're out by 3. Yeah. Then, you know, the chicken can be up there by 6. Good. All right? That's good. Best we can do. That's... I can try to find a Wazir, 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 Obviously, kind of pulled it. The initial pressure was 70. The problem is, she was at Hangu getting evaluated for asthma. Yeah. So, we've had to give her this fluid to get her pressure up. A little leery. The lungs sound clear right now. I just keep an eye on that. The pressure's up to 100. 
The pulse now is out of its final shot. The pulse is up there. Have fun. Thank you. Nothing else can do. Sorry, that's just just sewed up some cuts on her head. This unfortunate woman was uh, run over by a flying coach, a bus, uh, while she was uh, waiting by the side of the road. And uh, according to the father, the vehicle ran right over her. So she basically presented to us with a blood pressure of 70 and a slow pulse, meaning she was in spinal shock. She responded well to our treatment to IV fluids and uh, basically on evaluation was found to have a broken back, uh, had uh, completely separated T12 from L1 in her vertebral column and uh, not surprisingly uh, was paraplegic and uh, will probably be so for the rest of her life if she lives. I'm not going to be able to do it. <laughs> okay, folks. <laughs> this is a man in charge of yeah. freedom medicine. This is Daffy Duck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait a minute. <laughs> well, as you can see from the woman we just had in the hospital, the hospital is there not only to treat the 160,000 <laughs> refugees, but most all the people who come to us Although this isn't our primary function, our function here is to train paramedics and there's no better training than having a real life situation happen almost 24 hours a day. Uh, our paramedics are involved in emergencies probably 10 to 12 every single day from vehicle accidents and also from the war. It's overused. Overused. All right, so I'll give you an example. A simple disease, a bacterial infection that 40 years ago you could treat with, say, 100 milligrams of penicillin. Let's say 100 milligrams. Weak bacteria and made strong bacteria stronger. Okay. It's going to be it's going to be even more important because a lot of the people that you will be treated have had no exposure to antibiotics whatsoever. So in some of these small villages in Afghanistan, they have not been treated with antibiotics. But you are going to have to be very selective about your, who you're going to treat with antibiotics. The clinical experience. You don't have a laboratory. Your ex clinical experience. Penicillin V. Penicillin V. Okay. So it is no to the third question. Then you have to ask yourself, what is the next safest antibiotic that I can use? That is not the case. The case uh, big, filled with four different antibiotics and medicines, huh? What that indicates to me or that tells me is that that's a medical person who doesn't know what they're doing. They have three different antibiotics, they have six different kinds of vitamins, they have antacids, they have this. 
that medical person is not has not diagnosed the patient. They've just given them a bunch of medicines. <laughs> Okay, and again, I will tell you, it will take more time. You've got to teach the patient. You've got to explain the faith to the patient. Much more. It's much simpler to just give a pill. You've got to take time to teach them. Huh? Okay, now, Nazim, let's go down and look down here at duration. Remember, we're talking about bacterial sore throat. Look at this. Streptococcal infections. Two weeks worth of penicillin you've got to give. That's 14 days, huh? Okay. Because the streptococcus um, organism is so damaging to the heart valves and to the kidney, if you suspect it's streptococcal bacterial infection in the throat, go ahead and treat. Because otherwise you're going to have a child with malfunctioning kidneys and a bad heart. Hmm? Go ahead and treat with strong suspicion. Yeah, what we're doing here is uh, making up this patient. He's been shot in the chest. He has gone through the lung. And the idea here is to make the, pa make the paramedic students aware that there are certain things that need to be done when the lung has been punctured. And this patient has an open pneumothorax. And the appropriate treatment is to put an occlusive dressing on, not just the usual gauze. Yeah. So we will be watching how they treat this. Yeah. There's a hole here where the bullet's entered. There's no yeah. exit wound. The paramedics should all look at that, the back and be very careful about making sure there's no exit wound, which mm -hmm. also needs to be treated with an occlusive dressing. Yeah. Yeah. And then you'll be distributing these people around the field? We distribute them around the field so that they're fairly evenly uh, yeah. interspersed. And that way, when the paramedics arrive, they have to scour the whole field and make sure they know where each person is, yeah. and then hopefully triage them according to the seriousness of their injuries. Yeah. Stephen, how many classes like this have you done so far? I have never done this. I have just uh, seen a few of the practicals of the previous Ooh, class. Mm -hmm. six. They're quite okay. interesting. You will have to trade with three. In this. We'll simulate a vein so that they'll have to start an IV. So we'll trade here. Quite as realistic as we can make it without having them actually start an IV. Right. All day. Timo. What's your job? No, you don't need the administrative assistant. Okay, fine. We're gonna we're gonna wait around here. And what will you be doing during the exercise? I'll be assisting in the administration of bombs. Good. Has uh, Timo the <laughs> 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 
<laughs> not been performing his duties properly. As a, Timor, as the Timor, of bombs. Timor has probably been one of the real shining lights out here. Uh, without him, this whole, well, these mountains would still be intact without him. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, uh, he tells me he has several yeah. small tactical nuclear devices right. he wishes to use in this next exercise. Right. I'm anxiously awaiting uh, the use of them. I'm anxiously awaiting the exit out, the helicopter out. That's, out. <laughs> That's right. In the truth of this valley was a fertile valley with a thriving uh, <laughs> agricultural population here before. Well, yes, and I'm, I'm happy to say that we've been able to eliminate that problem. Uh, they were a uh, net exporter of food and they had in fact quite a glut of food and I believe that they're importing now and it's working out quite well. Yeah. Uh, I think the world economy probably has uh, really improved dramatically because of our little program here. Oh, it's very nice. Yeah. And Timor looks as if he's... Uh, he's very happy with what he does. He's Actually, very happy. Uh, Timor, why don't you say hello to Judith? <laughs> <laughs> hi, and hi to Jung Su and Stanley. Let's go! Zdjęcie That's right, some may shooting. We may have to duck. This chap's dead, isn't it? Is he dead, this one? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Marisa, we're on him. All right. Good. 
All right. Where are they going to take him? Go on, move in. Okay, good. Let's go. Okay, good. Okay, okay. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Get <laughs> 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 Your legs probably are not cured. No, Maybe still put a hundred in another. Otherwise, you don't know Yeah, Joy may be rich. It's good. I guess it's not training, but it's an experience, isn't it? It's training. It's everything they've learned in six months is right here today. Right. Come on, paramedic, let's go. Yeah. Bambas. Bambas, eh? Chiropestar e kan e tur nakadi. Chiropestar e tur nakadi. Pistar man. Serve primary serve bud. Daftam diga merizidam. Vaz kolishan khub bud vazam oran sarazi. Pistar. Ha. U taraf. Meriza, meriza gana bud. Omidi. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's go. 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 let Where's the uh, AK? On the hill with Sammy. Where is Sammy? Uh, it's okay. Bombardment, man. Bombardment, helicopter. All these guys are exposed. Nobody's protected. John? John? When the bomb goes off, get them back to their clinic to move the patients. Okay, watch up to it to your left. Right up there. Oh! All right, let's move them down, you guys. Move them down. They're exposed right there. Try to get them down inside. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Down in the clinic. Hurry up! 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 Hurry
No, I want him to check the vital signs. He needs to check. Have him check. Ten over sixty. So Pulse is one hundred. We slow down the IV. Okay. Okay. Good. So who does he want to check next? What's wrong with that patient? Okay. Go. Okay. Good. Good. What is the blood pressure right now? Blood pressure is 100 over 60. Okay. 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 Send the patient to the hospital. Okay, very good. And what would they do at the hospital? They wash it and they debride it and also they put it back in the abdomen and position it there. Okay, good, good. Shahid. <laughs> 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 
Bas? Okay. We're done, are we? Yeah, finished. Kalos. Bas. Kalos. Yeah, finished. How did it go, do you think? I think it went very well. Um, stressful condition for them, but uh, they reacted pretty well. Good paramedics. Steve, how many actually died in this uh, incident? Uh, one was Shahid yeah. when they arrived, and then another one died uh, before they could treat him. Right. So two altogether. <laughs> Look at that chap who had a bullet hole right in his forehead. Do you think uh, he was he was initially shaheed? <laughs> what you mean he came alive? No, he was he was pretty dead when they arrived. Yeah, but they they brought him back to the clinic. He was the last one they got. They don't like to leave their dead behind. Hoopka. In the clinic, he was going yeah. from patient to patient, getting their blood Well, he came out and got our patient when our guys yeah. weren't making it. Yeah. So, and that was all on his own. So that was good. Well, and I'd like to see how Naeem did on his because I think I would have expected him to be the best one. One of the doctors here said he did best. Naeem? Really? Yeah. yeah. Who was he? She said that. Uh, oh, well, Dr. Rahim Mar. That doctor was with the beard, you know? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Well, let's go down and see what we've got. They will shoot you. They'll say, yeah, What we've done is we, this exercise is a, is as realistic as we can get it, based on our paramedics who come back from Afghanistan and tell us what they do. So this is what happens inside. Do they feel that this is really four miles from their This is, really the 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 this is, are they're impressed. This is yes, very realistic. They're impressed. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're not only are they impressed, but we try and put as much pressure on them in one hour as we possibly can. Because when the bombs are dropping and the wounded are all over the fields, they have to function. I gathered, and they never stopped. They, they except can't when stop. they got to their patients. They can't you know, stop. Then they were just done. Oh. They're not allowed to stop. Otherwise all their people die. You walk on that well, how did it go today? You know, you know, all these people pass. What's the matter with you? Well, all, everybody passes. Oh, it's not a question of pass-fail. It's a question of, of them out critiquing them tomorrow. You got, you got a whole hill over there. Get them up on that hill. Each one of the students will be, crit sheep out here. Will be critiqued individually. What do you know, sir? That numb nuts that just walked across it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, there goes all the class for freedom medicine, right? We're going to pause for commercial identification. Why doesn't it blow up? Well, because the water's fair. That's why. Because I got 10,000 square miles out here, and decided to pick one of those five right there. Run him. Get a driver and run him out. Okay. No more comments. Thank you. So, Bob, anyway, what do you people learn out of this? Do you, what have you learned out of it? Uh, well, Lynn, Lynn, Lynn yells a lot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the students cower a lot. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I'm worried about is uh, how did Timor um, perform? Timor did exemplary. Yeah. Uh, we were still waiting for his. Uh, tactical nuclear device, but he said he wants to wait for the last class. And uh, see that mountain there now? Take a last look at it. Uh, he's going to move it, he said. <laughs> that's good. I think I think it's good. A little overkill, but that's good, because it'll be more like a real practical. You finished? I guess so. Do you want any more? <laughs> I certainly do, and I'm sure the audience certainly hurts. <laughs>
you get to eat? Are we... So Did you eat? No? Go. So, so, so. You eat? You ate? Promotion? Okay. Sure, this is a 13 month old uh, uh, girl who was uh, shot uh, in the abdomen twice by a Kalashnikov assault rifle about, uh, well, just a little over a week ago now. Um, we operated on her on an emergency basis and uh, she had uh, multiple holes in her small intestines and uh, two holes in her large intestine. We ended up uh, resecting about a yard of her small intestine and repairing uh, three or four holes there and uh, repairing the two holes in her colon. She's done uh, remarkably well post-operatively. Uh, uh, she needed to get two blood transfusions, but otherwise has done very well. And um, we were getting ready to close her skin today when we noticed a small defect in the abdominal fascia. Uh, and so we're going to put her back to sleep here and close that. And it'll also give us an opportunity to do a brief exploration of her abdomen because her biggest danger at this point in time is developing an intra-abdominal abscess. Mm -hmm. And we'll be able to take a quick look and make sure there's nothing bad in there and repair the fascia and close the skin. So we'll kind of kill three birds with one stone. Yeah, there will be <laughs> problems with operating in place such as for freedom. Well, Surprisingly, this is, a, this is a tremendously good facility. Um, I, don't, I don't think we can have a surgeon over here who expected to find a, a facility quite this good. Our major problems uh, come in the age of the equipment that we have here. Most of the equipment is surplus donation equipment. And um, we're constantly running into shortages of supplies. And, um, uh, not so much shortages of medication, but lack of variety of medication. Uh, but I think overall, everybody is surprised at the quality of uh, what we're able to do here. Uh, and, it, and each day it gets better. For example, the cardiac monitor is a new donation from, the, from Denmark and uh, has improved our ability to care for our patients. What about the problems of interpreters? Well, it, uh, it does become difficult here in the operating room, um, especially when we are trying to teach the staff uh, or when we're operating by ourselves. If we have an Afghan doctor here, of course, you know, they can interpret the technical portions for us. But um, uh, in a situation such as this, when we want to talk about anesthesia, we really need mm -hmm. someone that can interpret for us, or when it's just an American surgeon in here uh, during an emergency case. Uh, uh, sometimes I've had the translators come in and actually help during the, during the surgery. And they're pretty, uh, pretty adaptable. One night we had a gentleman in here who had been shot in the belly and had severed several internal arteries, and uh, the interpreter not only interpreted, but also hung blood for us and started IVs. So, but uh, it, is a, it is a bottleneck when we have to wait for one. Foley. Stop Foley. Steve, the problem of uh, looking after women in this is how often. How do you cope with that as an elder? Yes, it's difficult. To, uh, the women are reluctant to be examined by male doctors. Usually, if there's a woman present, uh, you can get her across to them that it's mm -hmm. in their best interest to be examined. Uh, but there have been people who have died here because they wouldn't let a male doctor examine mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And children would have died. Yeah. Their mothers wouldn't let them. Yeah, it's a, it's a big problem. Their mothers wouldn't let them be examined. Well, that and 
more more of a problem is is that they will not leave their tents unescorted unes unescorted by either a husband or a male family member and so many of them by the time they get here are much too sick for us to do anything for them and that goes for the children also they the mothers will not leave with the children yeah. uh, Stan, what was the story behind this the shooting this one was in? This was a, uh, a family dispute. And we got several stories, but it turns out that the real story is uh, the uh, yeah. mother of this child was having some sort of relation with the first cousin of the husband. And the husband discovered this and murdered the mother and the first cousin in shot the baby twice with a machine gun. She got some timely intervention from the staff here and was saved. I think I can handle it. So could you talk to her and uh, Dr. Phil Walsh about this? You want a pen of all? I just want to see if you can. Hey, you're going to intubate her anyway, right? I'll stand for. Biopental. Oh. It's not like PTL. Yeah. You might put that in before. If you're prepping, she's cool. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll prep her and then put it in. Yeah. Yeah. Just the place of seven eight Yeah, definitely. Oh, honey. Pretty a job closing up a, an emergency case, case like this, especially because we've had to leave it open for such a long time. Can we pull the blanket down a little? Uh, the surgery went well. 
Uh, it lasted about two and a half hours, and um, she looked very good at the end of the surgery. She had a small um, infection in the area where her appendix had been, but otherwise mm -hmm. looked extremely good. Mm -hmm. She should do well, and hopefully we'll be able to feed her in another few days. Mm -hmm. So what chance has she got of you know, surviving around the world with that sort of injury? Well, from the outset, her chances were very poor. Mm -hmm. um, now that we are a week or uh, away from her injury, her chances are much better. Mm -hmm. um, the major limiting factor now will be how soon we can feed her and get her nutritional status mm -hmm. uh, good. Oh, good. And what about the care for her by the cousin, is it? Who's going to the, look after her? Uh, there's an aunt and a maternal grandmother who are mm -hmm. taking care of her. Uh, they, by taking care of her, they sit with her. Our yeah. nursing staff does uh, the care, the actual medical care of her, yeah. and uh, the Afghan staff here is excellent. Right. So she'd have a fairly extended family, I imagine, anyway. Oh yes, most of these people have large extended mm. families. Is she from Afghanistan, that little girl? She is uh, a Patan, and yeah. um, they tend to cross the border quite frequently in yeah. each direction, so it's difficult So it's hard to, to know whether she lives in Pakistan or Correct. Lives in Afghanistan? Correct. Thanks very much. Sure. When did, we're going to do it. When did the wall fall? Down? The day before yesterday. In the rain? Yeah, in the rain. Yeah. How long has it been like this? Uh, maybe tomorrow we'll finish. Yeah, let's go for a walk along here first. Let's go for a walk along here. Okay, where do you want to go? Oh, uh, I'm <laughs> trying to stay out of the mud first. So, administrating this place must be difficult. It's uh, a bit like a small city. It's just like a city. Uh, we run all the phases mm. the building, construction, the finance, yeah. the feeding. Yeah. We have more than 150 people here. How many paramedics have you put through so far? Well, we have about 60 clinics inside mm -hmm. Afghanistan right now. We mm. have three classes here now, which means we have almost 70 young paramedics. Mm. One is about to graduate on two more days. Yep. And then the rest of them uh, two months, three months from now. Mm -hmm. You get... Uh, you get a little weary sometimes. Yeah. How often do you get back to the States, for example, to uh, have an R&R? &R? I, uh, I don't go back to the United States for my R&R. &R. There's too many other places in the world to see, and I've already seen the United States. I'm, uh, so I go what about Gayla Clare, your wife? She, she well, Gayla Clare is, sort of is the president of the organization, yeah. so she goes back four or five times a year for fundraising. Yeah. and to bring the Afghan issue to the American public. Yeah. I'm more of the uh, field director, yeah. so I stay here and make sure that everything runs. Mm -hmm. so what about fundraising? Is that, um, is that difficult? Fundraising Can you is, get all the money you need? Fundraising is always difficult when you... Uh, You think I didn't see that pig? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You'd have run right over that. My job to see it. <laughs> okay, then I'm not going to tell you again. <laughs> Let's walk this way, huh? <laughs> Fundraising is difficult when you have an issue that's not of interest to mm. the world public. Mm -hmm. uh, when you talk to people about Afghanistan, first you have to tell them where it is. Yeah. And then you have to tell them why it's so important. Mm -hmm and what's happened to these Afghans yeah. in the last eight years. Yeah. Uh, fundraising is very difficult. My wife does an excellent job. At it. What sort of experiences have you had uh, with the Afghans? What, what do you think of them? You know, we have, a, we have a real different experience living down here in Fort Freedom because we, we eat, sleep, and breathe Afghanistan. And when, when one of their relatives die, or their brothers, or their sisters, or their mothers and fathers, we feel all that same sorrow. Yeah. Um, 
We share everything with these people. When they go inside, they send us back letters from Afghanistan mm -hmm. telling us that they're okay. It's almost like we're their extended family. Mm -hmm. uh, we're really the first Americans they've ever seen. And so everything we do reflects on America. Yeah. Keep this ball in focus. It's not easy. <laughs> I think one of the things that's important is to show the people of the world that these young men are no different than the young men from any other part of the world. Um, this is part of their physical fitness program. They laugh and they cry and they, they fool around together and they have a good time. And these are the kids of the whole world here. These are just not the kids of Afghanistan, but they represent everyone. I think it's so important to show people that Afghanistan is not a country of wild men riding around on camels all day long. Yeah. Most of these people educated in some fashion. This is uh, what you're seeing here is a brand new class of students that were just selected as of yesterday. And this is their first day in our compound. Mm -hmm. um, the education level of these young men are all 12th grade, although their 12th grade has come three or four years ago, and they've been fighting for the last three or four years. Um, they're all educated. They're all guerrillas in some form of fashion. They are all Mujahideen. Every one of them is a Mujahideen. Every one of them has come from Afghanistan to be a part of this class. Everyone was selected by their commanders inside Afghanistan to participate. Hey. What's the prerequisite prerequisites for these people to join your clinic? Well, our classes are chosen from specific areas inside Afghanistan. We contact the commanders, and the commanders send these young men out with a letter of verification. Then they have to go through a written examination, and then they have a oral exam. They take a physical examination to make sure they're physically fit, mm -hmm. and then they take a physical agility test. Mm -hmm. um, they go through four series of tests before they're permitted to come down here. Mm -hmm. And then they stay with us for six months of very intense training. Uh, these young men will be with an instructor from 4.45 in the morning until 8 or 9 o'clock every night, six days a week. When they stay in this area here, all these, all these tents, what about in summer? Does this become unbearably hot? In the temperature range of about 127 to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, no one sleeps inside the tent in the summer. Everyone sleeps outside under a mosquito net. Have you had any of these uh, young chaps bombed and killed in Afghanistan? Well, unfortunately, we have lost one paramedic. He was uh, attending to his clinic, mm. from what we understand, an artillery barrage. And then after that, it was a uh, ground attack by helicopter troops. Mm -hmm. He was trying to evacuate two patients from his clinic, and uh, they just overran his clinic. But we've had three clinics bombed so far. Mm -hmm. um, lots of medicine destroyed, lots of medical equipment destroyed, but only one has been killed. Practical yesterday. I'm very okay. sorry. Yeah, how are you? Why? Well, I was in for shower. I had too much work, so I tried to get out today. How was uh, today's today? Good. Yeah. You guys did very well. You know, tonight, 7 30, yeah? Yeah. 7 30? Okay. Yeah, good. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? And then graduation and then off to. Some, some of you can't go back, yeah? Yet. Because of the snow. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. How many? Do you know? Uh, right. Two more. How many paramedics? Is that okay? Yeah, really good. Okay. Maybe we'll send some of you back to horse. Yes. Some days off first. Yeah. Maybe four or five days off. Yeah. yeah. Shower and then, really then we have to go to. Mega. But how much I told me more like a bit of a bubbly. No, I think I have a pint of water. Two hours of water. If you have a horse, bro. خود برای بالا در فاینوز می توانم که دارم سات باشه برای پیشوار. سلام علیکم. Yeah, but too many students. I don't know. Shush team, shush team. Two more and more teachers. I don't, huh? You teachers? Am I a teacher? Yeah. Maybe sometime. Teacher? Teacher? Six. Six. What's the matter? How much? Said Habib. Said Habib. Who, uh, who's an English speaker? Who's an English speaker? I think he is overheated. I think. What he just he just stroke stroke. Oh, he just came off saying he doesn't feel well. He needs to go to the hospital. Find out, find out what's wrong with him. Zakom grifte. Zakom grifte. Yeah, he's overheated. What's the matter? He flu. He has a flu. Yeah. He wants to go to the hospital. First day here, he wants to go to the hospital. Well, operation? He had better stay there at least for a week. <laughs> at least. Remember what I told him about exercise. Only the dead are excused. patients every day uh, and we cannot see all of them because this is a training center so our students uh, triage do triage and give numbers for them and we see uh, the interesting patients which are good for our students every day here how many patients um, do you not get to see? In other words, how many patients are trying to see you and that you simply can't see? Yeah, every day we have about uh, 100 patients who want to be seen. Uh, but uh, since I mentioned that this is a training center, only we can see about 40 or 50 patients every day. That's right. Thanks for that. You're welcome. People, there are some There are some things that are right there. فکارش با جرایی با مرتی دارم کار جرایی است. خب اول وش که میمیم سوار بته. علی احمد. الله شد. سلامتی با خلاصه. سلام. تا سلام سیدی با وجود. تا سلام نمبر. سنگ شوید. نم دخیل شوید کن. نه ولی خائن مشکل داره. پرسیدی لگا. پس پتای که ضرورت نلری کنه پس دارم سنجی کسی پتای سلام سیدی چند تا پارچه را که سر تبدیل سیدی خوب 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 خلاص <تصفيق> Ja, 
на одну метку. Так на холмера набрал уже. Šest nůdů na kivěři, jak se to šest sad do na kivěři? Dígeči. Dígá. Ulu mošor měří. Mošor měří, vale, nebudu měřit. Sabo, sabo. Ano, chápu. No, my šabek nám bylo, že mám sabo k pěsa do dělám zor. Vale, vale. Sají se? Sají. To je kde? Gusto, gusto, pane, pane, můžu šabek nám. Mám můj rád. Šel kilo, ne? Mám můj rád. Kdo mě doktor dal? Doktor se v šance dal, že? Šance dal, že? Já mám formičky dal. چرا اونو پر دی نکرده؟ همو فرم کی داریم؟ پر کدی میجا؟ آه اینجا داره؟ آه کدی ما هست؟ بله. دقیق کدی ما ارزی شدیدیم فامیل؟ همی آرای میکنم. آنها یاد شکر. شکر. دلخوش. اگر گفته یک موتور خوب بیته موتور. امبولانس؟ آیا خوب؟ آه. مگفی امبولانس رای کنی؟ آه. آه رفته؟ آه. باز پیش ما رای کردی؟ بازی جامد مال جزوی کرده. نمبرم دو. خو. پس از دکترام یک پرسان کنم. خو. چیکار دامی تونی؟ کشورم رفته، نه؟ آه پیشوار عملیات شدی مال جزوی کرده. عملیاتم شدی؟ آه عملیاتم شدیم. آه. عملیاتم شدیم دکتر جزوی کرده. جزوی. آه. خوب نشده. 
خب ایسا شوا بله یک پروگرام هم بسنجیم دیگه این موتور شخصی نیسته نه نه موتور خوده کرائیسته نه نه کرائیسته نه نه یک کرائیسته نه 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 پیشیم میتونید انتظار باشه باز او شایرون وقت آرائی کنیم We've got a patient out here that you were going to send to Peshawar Peshawar, they will take themselves, not by ambulance They can take? Yes Okay, now we have Emergency case, it's not It's not emergency Can they set up? Yes, we will If they set up, we can give them money for a flying coach They don't ask, they didn't ask for money also Okay, well, why don't we provide them with patient transport money then? All right, that's no problem. The other thing, just so that you'll be aware, uh, I'm going to push out this morning to pick up the payroll. Um, and we're going to send the other ambulance, our ambulance, up this afternoon. Especially in this area, very common, very common. About 30 percent patient are patient with malaria. This season will be beginning malaria. This is the beginning of the season. It's the beginning of the season, yeah. Yeah. And how long did you go for the season? Six months. Six months, yeah. Do many people die from malaria? Yeah, mostly children. They are getting the. Severe malaria and just they go to convulsion and unconscious and they they die before they. So what about this little girl? Will she be? Will she be alright? She will be okay. Yeah, we can teach her with chloroquine. Yeah. For three days, she will be alright. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Bravo. La cuchara no es directa. Cuchi. Dejo el dedo y te llevo a ti. No puedes mover tus pies. Vamos a caminar. I want to take a look at you, I want to take a look at you. Push it. Two of them, three of them. Three of them. Don, what's your actual position here? Well, I'm the camp manager, which means that I'm responsible for uh, transportation, uh, kitchen, security, payroll, uh, just about anything that's not involved with uh, the training of the students or with the uh, medical treatment of the patients here. Mm. Now, your Farsi, where did you learn that? Well, I was in the Peace Corps in Iran for a couple of years, and I spent another year in Iran after that, and then I lived in Kabul, Afghanistan for three years working with a uh, clothing production company. Yeah. And I spent another seven months over here now, so I've had a bit of practice. You've been with Freedom Medicine for seven months? Seven months, right. Yeah. Now, with the Afghans, you've spent, what, how many years with the Afghans altogether? Six and a half years. Six and a half well, years. Well, with the Afghans, it would be three and a half years now. And so you obviously like them? Uh, very much so. Why? I like the spirit of the Afghan people. Um, they have an enjoyment of life. Um, they like to have a good time, and I find that even under these very adverse circumstances uh, mm -hmm. that they're under today, they're still able to laugh and to enjoy themselves, and they have a lot of uh, hope for the future, um, and they're very proud people, and very generous at the same time. When it comes time to return to Afghanistan, do you think that a lot of these people will, or do you think they've made their homes in Pakistan? Is there a danger that they will stay here? I think uh, there's very little chance that the, Pac that the Afghan people would stay in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've been fighting now for almost nine years to return to their homeland. Mm -hmm. And given the opportunity uh, with a uh, uh, 
a stable government in Afghanistan, I think that most of these people would be very happy to go back home again. That's the people that we have in the camp here, that seems to be their only goal, is, is to go back to Afghanistan. They do have a fierce love for the homeland, do they? Uh, very strong, yes, indeed. So once the war starts to wind up, do you think uh, Freedom Medicine will stay here in town, or can you see it moving in other directions? Can you see it moving inside, for example? Well, I think that we certainly have the facilities here now that could be easily transported back to Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And we have a very competent staff here um, that would certainly like to have some employment when we go back. I think it depends on the government uh, that's established within Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. But assuming that we can uh, gain permission, we would certainly like to go back and work with the reconstruction of Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, rather than uh, with the end of the war, the withdrawal of the Soviet troops, rather than, let's say, automatically the problem is over, I think what we're going to have then is a, is a new set of problems, which is the reconstruction of Afghanistan, yeah. and the, the need to aid Afghan people will be as great or greater yeah. than what they have today. Because you will have a mass immigration of people, you will have approximately five million Afghan people going back home to a land that's been devastated, it's mm -hmm. been totally ravaged, trying to start all over and rebuild their lives again. Mm -hmm. And uh, from what I gather, uh, we would certainly like to be involved in uh, rebuilding Afghanistan. Now this sort of life, a person like yourself, it's not, it's not easy, is it, really? How do, you, how do you manage to cope? I mean, do you have to get out? Well, uh, there are certainly sacrifices that need to be made over here. But I find that in many ways, uh, with the hospitality and generosity of the Afghan people, it, mm -hmm. it compensates for some of the things that I might have to give up, that, that I might have in my life in the States. Uh, I think the, the spirit of the people is, is very gratifying to me. And in a way, it sort of uh, keeps my batteries charged, keeps my enthusiasm high. And uh, I would like to continue to work with these people. Mm -hmm. So you see yourself staying here for some time now? Certainly do. I certainly hope so. Okay, thanks.